Have a Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Sabbath school lesson. The title of our lesson is about Sabbath, experiencing and living the character of God. Before anything else, let's bow down our heads and pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins. Be merciful to us. Please uh, send the Holy Spirit so that we can understand your word and live your word. Give us wisdom and understanding to study your lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With me this morning is Mark Passion, a graduating theology student of Adventist University of the Philippines, and also Sir Jerry Favreronag, a professor in the College of Education. So, if you look at the title of our lesson, the first word is Sabbath, and the last words are character of God. How do we uh, connect the Sabbath, which is a law, and the character of God. In the great controversy by Ellen G. White, page 434, paragraph one, it says, the law of God being the revelation of his will, a transcript of his character must forever endure. So, brothers and sisters, to experience living the character of God is uh, to follow the law of God. That is very much related. Our memory verse this morning is Mark 2, 27 and 28. It says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, for this week, just an overview of everything that we're going to see on Sunday. We will see how God created the heavens and the earth. How astonishing that is. And then we will see how the Israelites remembered how to keep the Sabbath on Monday. On Tuesday, we will see how we can learn many, many things during the Sabbath. And on Wednesday, we will see how balanced should be our mindset towards uh, what Jesus did and what we cannot do on the Sabbath. And also, what can we do? There are nice things we can do for the community, which the Bible people also did. And uh, that will be everything for this lesson. We will learn a lot. So for Monday, uh, let's uh, ask Sir Jerry. Sir Jerry, how was it that Adam and Eve, when they were created, the first day was the Sabbath, Tell us, what does the Bible say about that? Okay. It's actually very interesting to find that, that God has given us two harmonious accounts of creation just in the first two chapters of Genesis. And I remember in one of my Bible classes, it has been taught to us that the Bible does not waste any words. It does not waste any chapter. It means that the fact that it was mentioned twice, the creation was mentioned, mentioned twice in the first two chapters just showed that it was very, very important. Um, let me put it in a more practical way. Uh, my, in my family, we have a tradition. Every year, we go out on my son's birthday and we travel, we go to different places. And you can just imagine that our first day in every new place that we go to is always the most exciting day because it's our first time to see these things and that thing. And, and, and we are always filled with excitement as we go around. The same thing is what happened to Adam and Eve on the Sabbath because we know that they have been created, they were created on the sixth day, and the first day after um, Sabbath, that was the first day of being together, yeah, you can just imagine how interesting it must have been for them, how astonishing that time was for them. I mean, it must be new for them to see the different creations of God, like the, the, the different animals, the different trees. But above all, I believe that they were astonished in realizing how great a creator God is on that Sabbath. I mean, when they look at the tree, they didn't just see green leaves and brown trunk, but they saw the character of God there. When they look at the animals, they just didn't see the, 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 the uh, trunk of an elephant or the long neck of a giraffe, but they saw the, the, the mighty creator who, who made all these things. So. The first day was a day of to be astonished for them because it was the time when they really had the chance to, to, to see and to marvel and to witness and to be in awe of the great creator. So Sabbath must be the same for us, I think, Sir Wynn, you know, in, in our modern world. Sabbath must be a time for us to be astonished 
to be astonished at God's goodness, especially during the week, how he has provided for us, how he has helped us, how he has comforted us. It must be, Sabbath must be a wonderful time for us to really, to really reflect on our creator and acknowledge his goodness and just appreciate everything that he has been doing for all of us. Amen. I, I actually want to read this uh, Genesis 2 verse 1 to 3. Sure. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Mm. Sir Jerry, you know, uh, I have created some small things, you know, but it, take me, it took me a long, long time. <laughs> but when I imagine how God created the whole world in six days, mm -hmm. you know, I really, you know, I, I like I surrender. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have nothing to say. I mean, you know, maybe we wrote our thesis or something. It took us one year or something. But God created the whole world in six days. Right. You know, if if I were, if I if I were to ask, I think I also want to follow whatever that God mm -hmm. uh, tells. Mm -hmm. You know, because He can create us and He can resurrect us if we die. So that's uh, how astonishing. What, what What's interesting too is uh, I saw like in Genesis chapter two, verse uh, one, two, and three. Uh, if you look specifically at chapter uh, 2, verse 2, it says that on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. And then if you look at verse 3, it says, then God blessed the seventh day and then sanctified it. So what I wanted to point out is that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 3 specifically, it says, and God blessed the seventh day and then sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work. Meaning to say that before God had blessed the day or sanctified it, that word sanctified is to set aside for a holy purpose. The presence of God had to be in that day. And specifically during that day, God had rested the entire day. And at the end of the day, then he gave his blessing upon it. Then he sanctified it and made it holy. And so it goes to show us practically today that the Sabbath is a day to experience the presence of God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that this day, besides you know Monday through Saturday or Saturday th through Monday, uh, this specific day is filled with the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe in Desire of Ages, it tells us that on the Sabbath day itself, God desires to answer our prayers more mm -hmm. on the seventh day Sabbath rather than any other day of the week. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show us that this day is so special, mm -hmm. not because God blessed it or sanctified it, but because God rested that day, his presence is w was with his people. Uh, let me just anchor on what you mentioned earlier. I think one of the ways that we can really be astonished on the Sabbath is when we really prepare our heart to be free on that day because the creator he himself he freed himself on that day he didn't do anything he rested on that day and i think that is one thing that is sometimes missing in our christian walk like we do not rest on the sabbath our minds our thoughts they are still on worldly things on the cares of the world that's why we, we don't have time to be astonished because there are things that hinder us, that bar us from appreciating the beauty and the vastness of, of, of God's grace and God's mercy. So uh, one thing that I just want us to understand is that in order for us to be astonished on the Sabbath, we must also rest just like how the Creator did. Okay, so thank you, Sir Jerry and Mark. Let's go to the Monday lesson. It is the time to rediscover. You see, uh, in Exodus uh, 16, it has the story of the Israelites after hundreds of years of uh, slavery in, the, in Egypt. God called them out and brought them out and taught them, re-taught them re uh, what the Sabbath is all about. Of course, the Sabbath was already there since uh, creation. They just forgot it because of the slavery. And the, let's read there about Exodus 16. And when the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. 
So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. This is the thing which the Lord commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need, one omer for each person according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it by the omers, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no luck. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. And Moses said, Let no one leave any of it till the morning, notwithstanding they did not heed Moses, but some of them left part of it until the morning. And it bred worms and stunk. And Moses was angry with them. Verse 21, So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. 22, And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest and a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to keep, be kept until the morning verse 24 so they laid it up till the morning and moses commanded and it did not stink as moses commanded and it did not stink nor were there any worms in it then moses said it that today for today is a sabbath to the lord today you will not find it in the field six days you shall gather it but on the seventh day there will be the sabbath there will be none now it happened that some people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And Moses, the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments? As you see, it's capital M. My commandments, capital M, my laws. That's not Moses' law. That's not the Pharisees' law. It's uh, God's commandments. The Lord has given you on the Sabbath, uh, Giving you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So, as you notice, uh, friends, that is Exodus 16. The Ten Commandments is Exodus 20. Even before you, the Ten Commandments were written in stone, God already gave the Sabbath. And actually, they ate manna for 40 years until they came to Canaan. But after the manna disappeared, does the, did the Sabbath disappear? No, it still continues, yeah? And it's, it says in Exodus 16, 32 and 33, this is the thing that the Lord has said, fill, our om fill an omer with it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread which I fed you in the wilderness. And they put that into the, inside the ark. You might be wondering, uh, should uh, we cook on Sabbath? Like, this is a difficult topic, my friends. And please fasten your seat belts and uh, don't, uh, how do you say? Uh, just relax a little bit. Let us finish everything and then you can, like the Bereans, uh, investigate whether this is true or not, okay? So, uh, if you, I tried to collect, uh, I, I used to persecute people who said we should not cook on the Sabbath. And uh, in the persecution, I need to get official statements. But when I looked in the official statements, I could not find anything to support my position. What I found instead was that what the Bible says and what Ellen G. White says, they are all aligned. So I had no choice uh, but to change my position and to align myself also with the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and the official statements. And I want to show you the official statements because we might have forgotten. You know, the fourth commandment says, remember. And I think many of us, including me, we have forgotten what it was about. It, look at this, Adventist.org. The buying and preparation of food and the reading of clothes and all the necessities of life will be completed before sundown Friday. Adventist.org information, official statements, Sabbath observance. Same document in BRI, Adventist Biblical Research. The bu buying and preparation of food will be completed before sundown Friday. Also from the archives of the General Conference, this is in typewritten form. That means it's, it was uh, in 1990. You'll see the document there. The buying and preparation of food will be completed before sundown on Friday. Furthermore, Ellen White, our, our sister Ellen White says, cooking on the Sabbath should be avoided, but it is not therefore necessary to eat cold food. The, in cold weather, the food prepared the day before 
should be heated. Sometimes we make the reason, oh, we can heat, therefore we can cook. But if you actually read the whole paragraph, it says, we heat the food that is prepared the day before. So just relax, my friends. I know God's people want to obey, but sometimes they don't know how to obey. We have tips. I will show you tips uh, later. If you look at the fundamental books, the yellow, the light blue, and the different color fundamental books, they all put the same thing on this day, the Sabbath. Those who make the family's meal should prepare for the food for the Sabbath so that during its sacred hours, they can also rest from their labors. That is from the General Conference Ministerial Association. Yeah. Okay, so how come we heard many, many people saying that we can cook on the Sabbath? Uh, we have to be careful, my friends. Uh, we have to check what is actually in the, it is written, or thus saith the Lord. Because there, Ellen G. White says in uh, Review and Herald, June 1, 1897, paragraph 7, there is a way of quoting scripture, the words that Christ considered of so much consequence that death was the penalty of transgression, so as to pervert it. God said, thou shalt not, but people are saying, you can. So let us be careful that we will not be those people. Furthermore, Ellen White says in Review and Herald, June 8, 1897, paragraph 3, Speak not lightly of the restrictions placed upon Israel in Sinai regarding the cooking of manna. And she ends, Let no remarks be made as though it were a very light thing whether or not we regard the special requirements of God in regard to the Sabbath. It is not left for any man or woman to venture to disregard one requirement of God. You know, we are studying this uh, quarter education. And if this is too educational or too hard a truth for you, just uh, look here in AdventistMission.org. I saw an article here that says, I don't want stale food on the Sabbath. She was not an Adventist. No, the husband was not an Adventist, but the lady was an Adventist. The husband said, I don't want to be an Adventist because I don't want to eat stale food. Now I was wondering, these people know that, this non-Adventist knows that Adventists actually eat stale food on the Sabbath. Amazing, yeah? So everything that comes like this, I, I observe that the Lord is sending all this truth to us so that we can remember and uh, how the Sabbath is to be kept. And one time I walked into a church, sir, I was late because I drove some missionaries. When I walked into a church, I heard a woman reading this in Tagalog. She said, uh, At habang ang araw ng Sabado ay nalalapit, dapat tingnan ng ina na ang pagkain ay handa na. I was so happy when I found this. So I t took a picture. Okay, that's the book that come, you can see in the screen. It's from NPUC or NPUM, and this is the actual book. The book is older than us, Sir Jerry. <laughs> 1968. I we used to think that we, we, the missionaries who came to the Philippines didn't teach us. But documents say, and all people say, our lolos, they know how to do it. That's the document uh, that they bought. That's the receipt from NPUC. And the CLC document, the Bible that we give away, it says, Anong tagubilin ng ibigay? Ang ibigay ng Diyos kaugnay sa kanilang pagkain araw sa araw ng bago dumating ang Sabbath. And they just read Exodus 16.23. Kanyang sinabi sa kanya, ito ang inutos ng Panginoon. Bukas ay taimtim na pagpapahinga, banal na Sabbath ng Panginoon. Lutuin ninyo ang inyong lulutuin at pakuloan ninyo ang inyong pakuloan at lahat ng lalabis ay itatago ninyo inyong ititira hanggang sa kinabukasan. Okay, how about amazing facts? Okay, they also read the same thing. They say on Friday, they're just quoting child guidance. Uh, preparing of garments and the cooking of food, they should be prepared on Friday. Okay, so uh, you, you know, we should be careful actually. The Bible says, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. We should be careful that we will not be those people who are speaking uh, perverse things, things that God contradicts what Jesus said. So in spiritual gifts, it says, those who neglect to prepare, the technique for observance is preparation. If we neglect to prepare, we, then we will go hungry or we will sin. Those who cook food upon the Sabbath violate the fourth commandment are, uh, and are transgressors of God's law. All who are really anxious to observe the Sabbath will not cook uh, will, will not cook any food upon the Sabbath. They will, in the fear of God, who gave his law from Sinai, deny themselves and eat food prepared upon the sixth day, even if it is not 
as palatable. Okay, so that prohibition should be regarded by every Sabbath keeper as a solemn injunction. Uh, okay, but you know, sometimes we will be persecuted for this, but there is a benefit. And then why it says, God's testing truth, the Sabbath is a testing truth, shall be brought to the front, become a subject of examination, discussion, even if it is through contempt placed upon it. The minds of the people will must be agitated. Every controversy, reproach, slander will be God's means of provoking inquiry and awaking minds that otherwise would slumber. Uh, let me ask Sir Jerry, do you have experience in the school where you studied? How do you have a tip how they avoid cooking Sabbath, uh, cooking food on the Sabbath? When I, was in, when I was taking my undergraduate program, um, I actually studied in a layman school in Virginia. And I think one of the ways that the school as a whole observe Sabbath is to really be intentional in observing it. So what we do, we do not have a church inside the campus. So every student is assigned a faculty member whom he can go with uh, because each faculty has an assigned church outside the campus. And on Fridays, if for example, if I, will, if I were assigned to, to you, then on Friday I will be helping you prepare food that we will bring for the potluck on the Sabbath. So we will do it on Friday afternoon, then, and then on the Sabbath, we go out together. I'll ride with you on your car, and we'll go to a local church, we'll worship there, and we'll be bringing the food that we have already prepared on Friday. So it's one of the practices that the school has. So it's more of institutional, really. It's, it's an institutional practice. Um, and of course, we still have students in the campus, because not everyone is able to go out. But uh, the cafeteria, we also cooked food on Fridays. And usually on Sabbath, the meals in campus, the meals in campus are simpler compared to other days. For breakfast, we'll just have cereal, bread, and fruit, so there's no need for cooking. And then for lunch, we only, usually we only have one or two um, entrees instead of, yeah, so just simple entrees and rice, and the rice has been pre-cooked, and everything we will just Heat them, yeah, and then prepare them. And everyone knows, knows it. And, and you can actually choose to have your food, like when you, when you eat breakfast, you can take as many fruit as you want so you don't have to, have to, to line up in the cafeteria for lunch. So this is an institutional practice that I really appreciate because it really shows that they value the Sabbath. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. That's very, you know, we want to obey, but we don't know how to do it. But the examples that God sends through your experiences and your experiences, they help us to be easier to copy. Eh? How about you, Mark? Tell us. Um, so just to piggyback of uh, what Sir was saying earlier, um, I also had a similar experience where I attended a college that really believed in Sabbath preparation. And Sabbath preparation, I believe, is, is the whole idea that this les the lesson is talking to us about. And for me personally, even though, even though the Bible mentions about Sabbath preparation on Friday, um, Ellen, White, Ellen White does make several mentions in her writings that we should always be looking forward to the Sabbath. So in other words, Sabbath preparation starts the moment when Sabbath has just ended. Like right when the sunset, right when sun, um, you know, ends, sunset ends, it, we should be thinking about the next Sabbath. And, and that's where the, I, I believe that the, the true Sabbath preparation starts from that moment on. And because if you think about it, and, and I've experienced this before um, when I was just coming back to God and I was giving my life to Christ, I had some, I guess, uh, some issues of how to keep the Sabbath because I never know how to keep it. So what happened was, uh, let's say on Sunday, um, I would listen to the radio, and then the radio would be playing, let's say there's a secular song. And then two days, two days later, I wake up with that song in my head. And then before you know it, when Sabbath arrives, Sabbath morning, when I wake up, that same song that I listen two days or three days ago is ringing again in my mind. And I started to experience that Sabbath prep is not just a Friday thing. 
it starts the moment when sunset goes, when the sun goes down on Sabbath. And we need to be very cautious of what we allow our minds to absorb or to think or to listen or to read uh, throughout the whole entire week because that could potentially affect how we keep our Sabbath. I mean, who wants to go to Sabbath, to go to church on Sabbath with a secular song in their mind? or with a secular a movie playing in your mind. I mean, I, I, nobody wants to. I mean, you didn't wake up this morning and say, I, I wanna experience that. But you want to fill your mind up with the word of God, the promises of God, and just delighting yourself in the Sabbath as well with the presence of God. And so, to me personally, I believe it starts the moment the sun goes down. And to add on to that experience, as far as Sabbath preparation, um, I believe on Friday is when they would prepare or cook the meals. And then on Sabbath, they would just heat, heat up the meals. And uh, usually breakfast would just be like a fruit, uh, a fruit or cereal and bread or toast, um, but normally bread. And then we would, for lunch, we would have something reheated. And then of course dinner, when the sun sets, then that's when they cook again. So as far as the cooking, that's what we would do. Uh, one more thing about rediscovering in the Sabbath is, you know, uh, if you're not cooking on the Sabbath, then you have more time to read God's word, to come to church early, and to really be astonished about uh, God and the Sabbath because you have prepared on Friday. So now let's take uh, in the Tuesday, let's see, sir, we, uh, let's ask Sir Jerry, how about the other uh, time for learning priorities? You know, Sabbath is, a, we have time to be with God and to learn many things about God. Okay, so for the Tuesday's lesson talk about time for learning priorities. And we can see here that during the time, Israel, uh, during the time of Israel, they were actually going with the flow. You know, they, they kind of observe, quote unquote, observe the Sabbath. They, they do what they were supposed to do. But there was really, it, it was more of question of commitment to the law of God and to what Sabbath really means. Um, if we read the whole chapter of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the verse, um, Isaiah 58, uh, verses 1 to 14, we will see there, um, we will see there that he, uh, the prophet Isaiah was mentioning that we should keep from doing as you please, yeah? We shouldn't go our own way. We should avoid doing as we please or even speaking idle words, yeah? Uh, the, 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 the prophet tells us that we should avoid these things. Basically, for me, when I, when I studied this, this uh, lesson, it's just reminding me what really are my priorities on a Sabbath? Because if this is if these are what I'm doing on the Sabbath, if I'm if I'm still busy on doing what I want, if I'm still busy on speaking idle words, if I'm still busy on doing my own way, if I'm still busy on finding my own pleasure, then it means I'm not really um, taking advantage of the Sabbath as a time, as, time uh, as, as a wonderful time to learn more about him, about the creator. Um, sir, if, if we can flash on the screen the Bible verse, the, yes, Isaiah 58, 13, if I, um, I'd like to read it for us. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. As you can see on verse 14, there is the word then which is it's conditional and and where is it anchored on the previous verses and the previous uh, so basically we will only appreciate sabbath as a time for learning priorities when we do not do what prophet isaiah told us not to do because if we only if we do not do them then we shall delight ourselves 
in the Lord, and the Lord will cause us to ride on the high hills of the earth. So Sabbath is a time for learning priorities. And we can only learn so much more about the Creator, about God, when our hearts, when our minds, when our intentions, when our commitments are really sanctified only for that specific day. Uh, thank you for sharing, sir. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 58, um, I just wanted to piggy off, piggyback off. Um, it's interesting how Isaiah talks about here about a fast. And the fast that Isaiah is talking about is not a fast that we typically think of fasting from food, although it is recommended uh, for health reasons and also for spiritual reasons that we should have, uh, we, we should fast. And I know a lot of my friends and family members, uh, they fast as well on the Sabbath. But the fast here that Isaiah is talking about, if you look at verse six, Isaiah 58 verse six, it says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? It's, it's so interesting that Isaiah talks about this fast as as, as if it's more than just food. It's a fast from doing self. Like it's a fast from your own selfish pleasure as, as Isaiah summarized it in verse 13. If you fast from doing your own you know, pleasure, your own words. But in Isaiah 58 verse six through seven and eight, it really talks about fasting from selfishness. And that is the true fast that God here is, is talking about that we all should have, especially on the Sabbath day. Now, I, I, I might be jumping ahead of our lesson, but this is actually talking about going into our communities, mm -hmm. helping those who are oppressed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, feeding those who are hungry, get, getting out of your comfort zones of your own home, and then going out, not just in nature, although nature is, is recommended, but going out into the community to put yourself, to put yourself, you know, last, and to put others and, and God first, of course, and so it's it's that fast of, uh, of fasting from your own, you know, doings, your own selfishness, and being unselfish, and getting out there and, and helping, you know, one another. And as it concludes in verse thirteen, you know, fasting from your own words. Now, when when God talks about the words here. It's interesting that Ellen White actually talks about how on the Sabbath we must watch our words. Yes. Especially like like business transactions mm -hmm. or like words that 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 remind us of the world or of secular mm -hmm. environment or whatnot. But our words should be more focused and geared upon God. Right. Right. And and of course, you know, meeting the needs of others as well. Right. And if I may add something, because I remember you were talking about fasting and how fasting is not just restricted to food. I believe that Sabbath is also a wonderful time for us to have gad to, to experience gadget fasting. You know, especially now that we are in the new normal, we are so used to having our mobile phones or our laptops and for the for for every every single day of the week. We are so busy. But then on the Sabbath, I believe that it would be a good time to put our gadgets on a fast. I mean, I know that some of us we still have our Bibles or hymnals on the Sabbath, but if we can put our phones on a, on an airplane mode so that we will not be tempted to open our Facebook and 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 post uh, my day something like that but we can really focus more on 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 holy things uh, so fasting definitely is it's not just restricted to food but it's about fasting from everything that is worldly that is of self and just focusing on God the Creator you, you know it's interesting um, <laughs> This kind of applies to me. For the past nine, going on ten months now, um, I my, my my iPhone is dead, and I haven't had I haven't used my iPhone for the past ten months. I, I have my, of course, I have my laptop uh, with me, but 
uh, I don't have a phone on me. I haven't been using it for the past 10 months. And, and to be honest, what you said is true, sir, that when you actually put away your gadgets, when you don't have any gadgets on the Sabbath especially, it's, it's much more enjoyable. Like you get to spend more time in God's word or out in nature or fellowship with one another if, if there is fellowship. And it's just, it's, you have that, that connection with God is more stronger. Mm -hmm. Then if you have an iPhone with you and you know, you're know you scrolling mm -hmm. and the next thing you're knowing, you're checking your email, mm -hmm. your Facebook mm -hmm. account, you know what I mean? Yes, like yes, Twitter, yes, yes. <laughs> Instagram. And, but it's, it's, it's a different, I mean, God never had a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve never had a laptop mm -hmm. you know, on the Sabbath day. Abraham didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they worship God without technology. And, mm -hmm. and that's the blessing. I think that God wants us to come back to that experience mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. Although it is good, it, it is good to have technology. Yes. Like when you're when you're having a you know a sermon, you mm -hmm. need a PowerPoint projector and whatnot. It's good to have technology. But as far as your own experience, it's it's good to just have the Word of God. Okay, thank you so much. Now we are going to our uh, Wednesday lesson. Are we on Wednesday? Wednesday. Our Wednesday lesson. So. Uh, but if, if you look in the Bible, Jesus did many things on the Sabbath, Mark. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us how can we find balance uh, in the Sabbath? As you see, the Pharisees accused Jesus of breaking the Sabbath. Can you please explain to us how we can reconcile what everything Jesus did and how and the Ten Commandments? So if you look here in Matthew chapter 12, uh, Matthew chapter 12, and verses one, uh, one through thirteen. There's this whole story about Jesus and his disciples. And on the Sabbath day, they were in the grain fields. Uh, they were in the harvest fields, basically. And what they were doing is that they were plucking grain or they were plucking corn on the Sabbath day itself. And very interesting. On that same day, the Pharisees. Uh, if you look at verse two, I'll, I'll just read it from Scripture. It says uh, Matthew twelve verse two. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, that's Jesus, look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And then verse three, but, but he said to them, this is Jesus, have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He, he and those who were with him, verse four, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Verse five, or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. Okay, so what does all of these mean? What, what, do, what is Jesus trying to share uh, to the Pharisees here? Well, we must understand one thing, who the Pharisees are. The Pharisees are a group of people that they really, they knew the law. They understood the law, they even memorized the law, and there's a Jewish custom where by age 12 or 13, you have to know the entire first five books of the Bible which is the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So in their mind, by the age of 12 or 13, they would memorize the entire five books of the Bible, of the first Bible, uh, the Old Testament. And not just only that, but they were the ones who also uh, gave strict regulations and they, they actually promoted these strict, you know, the strict observance to others who did not keep the Sabbath day holy. But Jesus here was trying to break down their barriers. He was basically trying to get to their head and say, the Sabbath is not just knowing the law. The Sabbath is not just memorizing the Ten Commandments, but the Sabbath is more about God's love, God's mercy, God's kindness, God's grace. And he was trying to show the Pharisees that look, if my disciples were hungry and they didn't eat and they were tired the whole day, um, it's, not, it's not wrong to go and grab food on the Sabbath day to eat. In fact, Jesus pointed the Pharisees back to scripture and he said, you know what? Look what David did. You know, when you go back to uh, what David did in 1 Samuel chapter 21, David was hungry and he fled to the sanctuary and he didn't have anything to eat, 
but he saw the high priest there. And he said, high priest, I'm hungry. Is there any bread here? And, there's, and he said, there's no, there's no uh, conventional bread. There's no regular bread, but there is the holy bread in the sanctuary that are, that are only for the priests. And then David basically said, you know, I'm being attacked and I, I, I really am hungry. Me and my men, we need to eat. And as a result, the high priest said, okay, you know, take the bread and eat. So the balance here is basically, if you are hungry, if, if it is as of a necessity, then of course, go ahead and grab, you know, grab grain. At least grabbing grain on the Sabbath was not like cooking on the Sabbath. There's a difference between plucking grain, like plucking an apple from an apple tree, rather than making, plucking the apple and then turning it into an apple pie. And it's also not harvesting. Eh? And it's, yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> harvesting, right? So there is, that, there is that balance of, you know, if, if someone is hungry, just go to the tree and, and grab something. At least you don't have to, you know, cook it, you know? And so that was the balance that, that Jesus had. So there is a question, can we heal on the Sabbath? That's a, that's a really great question. Um, you know, <clears throat> Jesus did heal on the Sabbath. Uh, there are countless times. In fact, in Matthew chapter 12, verse nine, uh, Jesus here is accused of breaking the Sabbath because he was quote unquote healing on the Sabbath. And how did Jesus respond to that? In verse 11 of Matthew chapter 12, Jesus says to them, what man is there among you who has one sheep and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? So lift it out of the pit. Verse 12, of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And that is the, the primary principle that Jesus here is speaking about. It's doing good on the Sabbath. If there is a necessity, if someone is in pain, like of course, imagine if you were a doctor and a patient came to you or came to the hospital uh, and she needed to give birth. Yeah. But you are in Sabbath school and the nurses call, up you, call, call you up and say, hey doc, there's a patient, she's about to give birth. What are you going to do? Are you going to tell your nurses, hey, you know what? Give it about three more hours till the sun goes down and then I'll go deliver the baby? Or are you going to deliver the baby? And you're the only one that can deliver the baby. I'm pretty sure you would want to help deliver that baby rather than wait it out for the next three hours for the sun to go down. And that's the purpose uh, why Jesus was talking to the Pharisees was like, like this, was because he wanted them to show that there is needs. Um, and even uh, there's this quote here from Medical Missionary, page 216, uh, paragraph two. She says, physicians need to cultivate a spirit of self-denial and self-sacrifice. It may be necessary to devote even the hours of the Holy Sabbath to the relief of suffering humanity, but the fee for such labor should be put into the treasury of the Lord to be used for the worthy poor and who need medical skill but cannot afford to pay for it. So in other words, this what, what Ellen White here is trying to tell us is that it's okay to do necessary work on the Sabbath, uh, uh, emergen works of emergency or necessity, but the pay that we receive, it's not to be for our selfish advantage. It's not to be for our selfish motive, but it's actually to help the cause of God, to help the cause of God for those who are poor or those in the missionary field. I believe Ellen White also says that uh, as nurses or physicians, we are to give our finances on the Sabbath to those in the mission fields. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, how about for the community? What, what did the people in the Bible, the disciples, uh, what activities did they do for the community? Can you share us? So for the community, of course, in, in in our example that we have here in Acts chapter 13, 16, 17, and 18, basically they all show the importance of going out into the public and reaching the people in the community as, as we mentioned earlier in Isaiah chapter 58. It was the fast of selfishness, putting others first on the Sabbath day, meeting their needs, and then, and then bringing them back to Jesus. Uh, allow me to read this quote here. I believe this is this is a Sabbath of Global Youth Day. It says here, activities on Sabbath during GYD should be very consistent with our keeping of the Sabbath. 
Cleaning, painting, and repairing are general items that can all be done on another day than Sabbath. Do things that are appropriate uh, Sabbath activities and a blessing to people. God will bless your GYD activities to his glory. What a great way to participate in total youth involvement. So basically this quote is, is giving us uh, the idea that it's okay to help others, but the things that are, that are not uh, of, uh, like for example, cleaning and painting, we can do that on another day rather than on the Sabbath. The purpose of the Sabbath, reaching out to the community, is to meeting their needs, specifically with the medical missionary work, with the right arm of the gospel. That's how God can use the church to reach out those who are, who are suffering. And when we can use the medical missionary work, when we can go out and uh, just bless people with even our prayers, or our presence, or just food, you know, giving them food. Uh, get, you know, you can pluck your own apple, and then, hey, we got you some apples <laughs> to eat. Uh, just by doing that, you would give them a message of hope, that, hey, there is a God, and perhaps the Sabbath is true. Okay, thank you so much. In closing, uh, let's read the, the Friday quotation. It says, uh, Ellen White says in the Desire of Ages, page 283, no other institution which was committed to the Jews tended so fully to distinguish them from surrounding nations as did the Sabbath. Okay, God designed that its observance should designate them as his worshipers. It was to be a token of their separation from idolatry and their connection with the true God. But in order to keep the Sabbath holy, men must themselves be holy. Through faith, they must become partakers of the righteousness of Christ. When the command was given to Israel, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord said to them, Ye shall be holy men unto me. Exodus 28 and 22, 31. Only thus could the Sabbath distinguish Israel as the worshippers of God. Further, it says, Then the Sabbath is a sign of Christ's power. You know, sometimes uh, we ask, if I keep the Sabbath, will I lose my job? You know, Doug Bachelor says, you try it. Most employers love to, uh, to retain honest people. And if God can create the heavens and the earth in six days, your job is very small thing for God. God will give you a job. As a sign of his sanctifying power, the Sabbath is given to all who through Christ become the part of Israel of God. Uh, I have uh, some links here. If you want to see how manna fell in the Adventist mission station in Angola, you can actually Google SID manna Angola and you click that video, you will see the SID media team and the pastor tasting manna that fell on Friday not on Saturday, in an Adventist mission station in Angola. Uh, furthermore, I would like to uh, share tips and helpful examples on avoiding Sabbath cooking. And if people are having debates with you, I also have here some excuses. I tried to collect all the excuses we have heard since we were small and tried to look for the answers from the Bible and spirit of prophecy and just uh, uh, common sense. How about traveling? I just tried to summarize this resource because it's quite five paragraphs. In summary, which we should avoid. If we have no choice, we should reserve the tickets before the, day, the Sabbath. And when we are in the travel, we should avoid uh, conversing and holy conversations with other passengers. And we should try to reach before the Sabbath if possible. And if we can help other people who are sick in the travel, we should relieve suffering. And if we can preach, if you want to preach while traveling, like Ellen White, sometimes when they are waiting for the train, they spoke the truth. How about taking bath? <laughs> okay, uh, in John 9, Jesus he he healed a blind man and said, you go wash in the pool. And uh, sometimes we are uh, worried about this one because Ellen White says you take this uh, bath before the sun sets. But actually, Pastor Brian Tolitin of the Ejewite Estate gave us about four or five references where Ellen G. White took a bath after the sermon, before the sermon, and after, uh, like in the noon or in the night, in the sub during the Sabbath. So uh, we can uh, weigh it, uh, the merit for that. How about uh, cooking and camping? <laughs> so we have to be educated. This is a, a, a 
quarter about education, and this is very educational. We have learned. Let's read uh, Review and Herald, May 8, 1883. Let us not come to the camp meeting to break the Sabbath by cooking on that day. The instructions which God gave, okay, the, that's the thing in the Bible. Furthermore, it says, all needful preparation for the Sabbath should be made on Friday. This is still about camping. On the Sabbath morning, if the weather is cool, not hot, gruel be provided. Of course, the gruel, you can cook that, make that before the Sabbath. Further than this, all cooking should be avoided as a violation of the Sabbath. So even in camping, Ellen G. White is very clear. I just want to give a little bit of testimony. Uh, I used to help a major ministry, sir, and Mark, and I recorded so many of their testimonies. In my observation, about 80% of the people who decide to be baptized said that the message that gave them, that uh, pushed them to decide is the Sabbath. 80% of them, they said Sabbath message is the one that made me decide to be at Seventh-day Adventist. The 20%, they said it's Leviticus 11, the one about baboy pigs. And then the, the, the rest is the, the doctrine about the true church. So uh, I can now understand really why Psalm 19, 7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Wow. So uh, how about, uh, so as we close, uh, do you still have anything to say, sir? Well, our lesson today is about education, right? I mean, it, it focuses more on education. So. Uh, and, and I'd like to uh, anchor that on our topic, Sabbath, experiencing and living the character of God. I believe that Sabbath is a wonderful time to really learn much more about God. And, if you t and, and in education, we have a saying that the best way to learn is to experience things. Not just to read it, not just to hear about it, but to experience things. Because when you experience things, it tends to stay more in your long-term memory. Because you are also using the different, uh, uh, the different domains. You have the cognitive, the psychomotor, and the affective once you experience things. And the best way for us to learn more about God is to experience God. And Sabbath is the best day to experience God because Sabbath is the time when we can go to the community, uh, understand the, the poor and perhaps under, uh, realize our calling on how we can be of more service to them. Sabbath is a great time to be astonished about God's creation. Sabbath also could be a wonderful time to discover and rediscover about the truth and about our Creator, of course, and that Sabbath is a wonderful time to re-plan and check our priorities. And when we do these things, then definitely we will experience the beauty, the joy of Sabbath. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes Sabbath becomes a burden, especially to the kids. You know, like, hey, it's Sabbath. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, daddy, can I, why can't I do this? You know, I have a son, <laughs> an, an eight-year-old boy. And on, on, on a Sabbath, sometimes he asks daddy, I hate Sabbath. I said, why? Because on Sabbath, I can't play with my friends. I can't do this. I can't do that. But, you know, as parents, as Christians, it, it, we must be, innovative we must be creative in making sure that sabbath is a delight and how can we do that again by doing what the lesson was telling us to do go out to the community you know uh, immerse ourselves with them experience uh, talk about nature learn more about nature and do these things because again the sabbath is a wonderful um, learning environment it is a great time for us to know more about and experience our maker Thank you so much. I'm sorry we are, uh, we are out of time. We really want to talk about the Sabbath. Mark, can you lead us in our closing prayer? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this Sabbath school lesson concerning the Sabbath. And Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, the things that we've learned today about the Sabbath, Lord, um, Lord, help it not to be a, a burden for us, Lord, but to truly be pleasure for us, Father. You have made this special day, Lord, to bond with you and to realize that you are our creator and our redeemer and the one who sanctifies us as well. Father, we pray, Lord, for everyone here watching, our worshipers online and those who are uh, here at home as well, our families and friends, that this message, Lord, would really speak to our hearts 
and to show us, Lord, how, how much you desire us to spend time with you, especially on your Sabbath day. And Father in heaven, help us, Lord, to, to practice the things that we've just talked about here, to, to apply them in our daily life and to, to really uh, enjoy the Sabbath, looking forward as, as, the, as the sun starts to set already on the Sabbath day. Help us, Lord, to look forward to the next Sabbath as well. We thank you so much and we praise you and we give you all the glory and thank you. Thanks for all that you've done for us. Thank you for never giving up upon us. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen.